Peace brothers and sisters who have arrived here on this channel. Which one of these two uh, calendars or clocks are correct? Which one of those are correct? In this video here, I'll be answering some questions, some questions that appeared in some videos on YouTube, questioning my sky clock that I created for you guys on the right side here, comparing to the Hebrew Maserat, which is the 12 constellations that you can search on the internet, in which the Hebrew, the the Hebrews, the Jewish nation, created since a long time ago. So in this video, I'll be uh, telling the differences between them and also which one is correct. Is the order of my sky clock incorrect? Let's find out together here. So just to begin this, you will, you'll see that they are different in the position, in the order of the constellations, while the, the 12 here you see uh, the Virgin, and on the 6 you see here Pisces, mine the 12 is Pisces and the 6 here is the Virgin, Virgo. So they are inverted in some ways and this created some confusing on some people here that watched uh, others, vi other videos around the internet here. So to begin, to begin this, let's first go towards a normal wall clock to understand the basics first. So my first question in this clock is when does the first hour start? When does the first hour start? Does it start when the uh, smaller pointer is in this area here of the clock or the first hour just only starts when the small pointer is on this area of the clock. If you know and understand how a wall clock works, you know that the first hour just starts when this happens, when the small pointer is pointing the first hour, the first number, and the large pointer, the taller pointer, is at the 12, uh, the 12 pointer there, 12 number. So that's the first hour. So another question for you guys. When this happens, then what time is it in the clock? Basically, you see that now it's 1.05. So you see that when the first and the smaller pointer is pointing the 1, that's when the hour one starts the first hour starts and then the minutes change changes uh, because of the taller pointer that goes through all throughout all of the numbers so it is one uh, it is one it starts the one hour with the smaller pointer and then it keep, keeps on going and it keeps on being the first hour until it reaches the second number and so on it is very simple uh, for you to understand. Now, now that you see this and understand this, let's go to the Hebrew Maserat and let's check if you understand how it happens here. So my question for you is, when does the for first month begins? When does the first month begins? Is it in this area here? When the sun is in this area? Or is it when the sun is in this area here. So just like a normal wall clock, you can realize that the first month only begins when the sun reaches the first constellation. And in this case, in the Hebrew Maserat, they are calling the first constellation the constellation of Libra. So you understand this uh, in a few minutes. But just uh, because of this, as the other video that was mentioning this Hebrew Maserat, for some reason, for, for some reason, was saying that Virgo was the first constellation, and clearly that's a misunderstanding of how a clock works, because clearly Virgo is a 12th constellation in this Hebrew Maserat, and not the first one. The first one clearly is Libra, and that's the, that's the first misunderstanding of the video mentioning the Hebrew Maserat comparing 
to my sky clock. So we know clearly that Libra here in this uh, picture is the first constellation, the first month. And the moon will go through all, all of the numbers, all of the constellations, and reach the sun again. And that's the new moon on uh, when the sun is together with the moon here, pointing the first hour or the first month here. So, to answer this question, the first month begins when the new moon is sighted in the first constellation. Basic knowledge, that's uh, very important for everybody to understand how a uh, clock works, to understand how the constellations and the sky clock works. Now, why is it different from the one that I made? So you can see here, mine compared to this one. You see the difference is on the order here. And you will see that the difference based on these two pictures here is because of this. There are differences between the civil and the biblical calendar. So there are two major uh, calendars or uh, the way the Jewish nation sees the calendars because of the biblical or religious calendar and the civil calendar. And this is a basic a Google search that you can do to understand this so together here you just basically just search this out on YouTube or on Google and you will find that there are differences between the religious calendar and the civil calendar from the Jewish nation so the religious calendar came into existence just before the first Passover which was followed by Exodus from Egypt according to Exodus 12 1 and 2 the Lord changed the Hebrew calendar to begin in the spring, whereas it had previously began in the fall. The Jews, however, maintained the original calendar, which was based on growing seasons, and superimposed the religious calendar over it. So, the Jewish nation uh, maintained the original calendar that uh, started in the fall. Even though God in Exodus 12 said to change the Hebrew calendar to begin the new year in the spring. So, because of this, you see that they have uh, the liturgical year or the biblical year and the civil year, and they are changed by six months. So, Abib or Nisan is biblically the first one, but they call it the seventh one. And Tishri, the seventh one, they call it the first one, and so on. So it's all inverted in six months. And you can search this out. There's everywhere. This is a basic principle that everybody must understand. It, it is even odd to see somebody receive information about the sky clock or about the constellations from God and do not realize this basic stuff here that the, there are two major calendars for Israel. A biblical one, that is the one that God wants you to use, and the Jewish one that maintained the old one uh, which they created since, I don't know, before Exodus there, in the Babylon Empire. And also you can see here, there are many, many informations that you can see that are the same here. So, while for them, the civic, the Tishri, which falls in September or October, is the first one, for the religion, for the Bible, it is the seventh one, which is inverted so we find this information here about Babylon calendars very interesting here in Mesopotamia the solar year was divided into two seasons so that's why we created a video also about the only two seasons in Israel the summer which included the barley harvest in the second half of May or in the beginning of June so this is a very interesting information that while I was doing this video or preparing this video I found that the barley harvest actually starts in May and goes up to June so this further further uh, proves the point that we are actually in the true uh, Passover around May and the true uh, harvest of the barley and not the ones that people are telling us that the Jewish nation currently is telling us it's one month off so there are the summer and there are the winter which roughly corresponds to today's fall or winter three seasons and four seasons so basically very interesting information here 
based on the Babylon calendars. And also here, another good information uh, from this encyclopedia here. The months began at the first visibility of the new moon. And in the 8th century, the court astronomers still reported this uh, import, important observation to the Assyrian kings. So there are a lot of people uh, in the internet as well telling that the, the months could begin with the full moon instead of the new moon. And I don't think that that's it. Because that implies that all of the feasts, the new moon feasts, which is only one, it is Feast of Trumpets, will be a full moon feast. And all of the full moon feasts, which are Passover, Tabernacles, uh, Purim, and many others, they will be uh, invisible with the new moon. So they are, it doesn't work properly, especially if you look at the sky clock, which tells you that the sun which is the hour pointer has to be close uh, right above here the hour the minute pointer for them to point at the, the singular beginning of a new month so it does not make sense the moon being all the way here uh, on the opposite side of the sun the hour pointer and that's the beginning of something no that's the middle of something so uh, another hu uh, huge information for you to understand here so clearly you see that this Hebrew Masoret is based on the civil calendar because the Jewish nation, they maintained the old calendar that started the year here in Libra, which is why they call it Rosh Hashanah. So they changed the year in, in Libra, they changed the, the, the new year in Libra, in Rosh Hashanah. They created, uh, they start the Shemitahs and Jubilees all in here, and they call up until this day, the when the sun is in Libra or supposed to be in Libra, the currently seven constellation, they call it the first uh, new month of the new year. So until today, at this 2023, the Jews are still maintaining the old ancient ways. However, God did this. God, He uh, called the seventh month the first month. So He inverted all the constellations in this manner here so God did in Exodus 12 this call the first month the month of Nisan the month of Aries the first uh, month of the year so the change of the year happens now since Exodus in uh, the first month which is now the first constellation Aries so this order is not wrong because uh, God is the one who changed it and he changed it for a purpose for it all to begin with his sacrifice for it all to begin with the sacrifice of the lamb which is Jesus Christ so the order of the measure or the order of the constellations they are not wrong it is God himself who did this change and this is the more, most correct uh, way to see the constellations now because since God has changed it he hasn't changed it back so we cannot call now Libra which is now the seventh month the seventh constellation uh, the first one because of the old ancient Jewish traditions ways we have to call it Aries the first constellation the first month because God has said so so it is better to stick with what God has said than what to tradition of men tradition of mankind tradition of the Jewish nation has maintained so I hope this has answered a lot of questions that people has brought up about the sky clock. So this is correct. If you see my sky clock here, the order is just like it. It's correct. Aries the first one, Libra the seventh one, just like the one we saw here. Now corrected based on what God has said. And another thing that it is a very interesting thing that the people said about this sky clock of mine is this uh, they said that in this position here uh, Aquarius which is the man is above lion which is the lion of the tribe of Judah here so this is a boast a boastful way to boost mankind instead of boosting the true King Jesus Christ so this is wrong this the order is wrong because 
uh, the Aquarius, which is the man, is above the lion, which is supposed, uh, and now and not in the contrary, because according to this person, the lion has to be above the man because it is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's why the order is incorrect. That's why everything is incorrect. So this is very odd as well. It's a very weak argument because there are no above or under in this viewpoint. We are basically looking at the earth from above. So there are no over the top or under the earth. It is the the positions of north, south, east and west. So it is very odd to see somebody say this. So there are no above and under. There are north, south, east and west. We are looking sideways here and this view of the earth is a view from above. So we are above looking at the stars and constellations they are sideways in the earth and they are the, the positions are north, south, east and west. So very odd things that people are claiming here. Uh, most of them because they don't understand simple things. They don't understand how a clock works. They don't understand the basic Jewish differences between the civil and the biblical calendars. They don't understand the positions of north, south, east and west. Uh, so they, they don't understand much, which begs the question, is it God that is leading them, really, with all of this misinformation that they had? Or is, they, is it that just they themselves are thinking they are wrong, they are right, and everybody else is wrong? So this begs the question here because it's, this is a very simple thing to understand. This is a very simple basic stuff to understand. And now that I have proven to you guys that this is uh, true, this is correct, let's go to the correct and fixed sky clock, which is now correct. Now that I have answered all the questions there that appeared in videos from YouTube, now let's go to what's going on in this day. For me here is already April 20, and for you, some of you guys will be in a few hours. But this date on April 20, at night at 6 p.m., that's when the sun will be in the constellation of Aries, and the moon, together with the sun, will be also in the constellation of Aries. And that's when it's going to happen. If it's not happening already, the solar eclipse that it's going to be marking the start of the new year. So we're right now at the last day of the year of the biblical year 2022 or the the correct year 5992 and tomorrow April 21st that's the first day of the first year of 2023 since the crucifixion or 5993 since the fall of Adam and Eve so it is a very key important moment that we have right here this solar eclipse that everybody seems to be talking about lately is very important because it's marking the start of the new year and the changing of the Shemitah possibly the changing of the Jubilee uh, is a very key and important moment and everything uh, could be happening anytime now between now and Passover and Passover will be when the Sun will be still in the constellation of Aries but the full moon in the opposite side of the Sun will be in the constellation of Libra marking the true Passover on May 5th and May 6th from May 5th to May 6th that's the true Passover so from the solar eclipse starting at this day today until May 5th and May 6th that's a very high watch date for us to expect the rapture of the church because it all fits perfectly based on everything that we have been seeing lately on the news, on the political events, with war events, with uh, the constellations, with uh, prophetic events, everything, everything matches, everything matches since historical, biblical, geopolitical, in all of the, the areas that we can see and perceive, everything matches, and it all points that it has to happen anytime between now and the true Passover date for it to be perfectly aligned to what we understand right now. Honestly, I do not know how God can make Passover happens, how God can make this rapture happens after this 
period of time starting now until May 5th and May 6th because it will be uh, very off from many things that we are seeing that is at the limit right now. So the odds are very likely, very very likely, that the rapture can happen anytime between now and the true Passover there on May 5th and May 6th up to May 10th which will be around the time of the true resurrection date which will be 117 so up to May 10th I would extend the watch because it is, it is a very key important moment for the whole Bible the whole uh, situation that we have here that's the highest watch we can have you know if you watch my previous videos from everywhere we can look the the, the things it is basic based basically it, it is all pointing towards the soon rapture of the church the start of the war the new world order everything comes into place perfectly and then all the way there in September October that's when they will sign the seven years of peace with the Antichrist and so it begins the tribulation the Jacob's trouble so I hope that you are very very excited because if it feels feels like that anytime between anytime now we can go home anytime now the trumpet can sound and it will be it will be catching uh, calling many people by surprise just to look at this uh, chart that I made for you guys that we are here this little ship we are now getting towards the first day of the first month tomorrow and that's when this highest time frame here begins for us for the church possibly because also it is six months until I one two three four five six six months until here the face of trumpets which is a six month gap between the rapture and the start of the tribulation there in the fall feasts if we know and understand that the tribulation Jacob's Jacob's trouble has to end in this fall feast because Jesus will return in this fall feast so it has to start here and it has to end here so if it has to start here then this gap between the rapture and the and the start of the, the Jacob's trouble it's perfect with within six months because of also the passage that David uh, ruled from Hebron which is the, the town of the Gentiles he ruled from there for seven years and six months so this six months is biblical as well as a gap or time frame that Jesus or the son of David will rule over the Gentiles for six months uh, seven years and six months so it is six months until the start of tribulation plus seven years until 2030 which perfectly aligns to his death and resurrection and everything else that we have already seen so we are here uh, the odds are in our favor here it's very likely that a rapture uh, uh, can happen anytime between now and the true Passover true resurrection date and also I believe that this also proves the point that the Jews are uh, are very actually one month in advance from the true calendar in which we are following now because they are not looking at the stars they are looking at traditions they are not fixing their their calendars based on the the view and the, the, the switch that the clock makes in the sky over 2000 years they are not precisely aligned to the constellation of Aries for it to be the first month that's why they are one month in advance and it perfectly show perfectly shows us that we are in the true uh, first month because not only we are aligned but uh, for many people that are following Jewish uh, calendar Jewish months they will be on second Passover when it is true Passover so imagine that nothing ever happens on second Passover it is very odd that God would rapture the church here on second Passover and then six months after the second Passover would be all the way there on the eighth month the month of the flood which is a little bit odd as well because Jesus has to come in the trumpets or in the tabernacles time frame and it will be very odd very very odd for it to be second Passover because also Jesus has to fulfill the true Passover with us in the heavens to fulfill the 
the prophecy of Joshua, uh, fulfilling Passover in the Promised Land before uh, uh, going, passing over to the Promised Land before the Passover and celebrating it there, and also Jesus saying that he would uh, drink of the fruit of the vine with us in the Father's house when he calls. So we have to fulfill Passover in heaven already. So it fits perfectly from now until through Passover. It is the time frame that we are expecting for the rapture to happen and for all of this to fit. If we pass, there are uh, high watches all throughout the year, but it is very odd if it passes because it all matches for now. I cannot see it going further than this at this moment of time. So I hope that this has blessed you. I hope that this has uh, answered your questions. Both are correct, but one is uh, is basically looking at the traditions of the Jewish nation that's starting the year in September, October, and the fall with Libra. And the other one is the correct version, biblical version, uh, following what God said in Exodus 12, starting the year in the constellation of Aaron. And if you have any other questions, do please comment in this video so I can answer them when I have the enough time to do it. So, Maranatha, I hope we all can meet each other there at the wedding supper of the Lamb as soon as the trumpet sounds anytime between now and true Passover, true resurrection date up to May the 10th. Maranatha, God bless each and every one of you.